in the wording, the poetic sound in the King James Version. You don't find it in the newer version. And this too attracts people to the King James Version. A comparison of just these two versions, verses in Romans 10 supports the argument that nothing ever penned in the English language can match its sound and rhythm. Coupled with the musical genius and energy of the African diaspora, it is not surprising that the King James Bible is popular with rappers. The use of the King James Bible by rappers, such as Coolio and others, provides us a snapshot of, I argue, competing ideas about life. Artiste Leon Ivey, Jr., born August 1st, 1963, better known as Coolio, is a Grammy Award winning musician, rapper, actor, and record producer. Best known for the song Gangsta Paradise in the movies Dangerous Minds, it reached number one on the Billboard Hot 100 for three weeks. It was the number one single of 1995 in the U.S., U.K., Ireland, France, Germany, Italy, Sweden, Austria, Netherlands, Norway, Switzerland, Australia, and New Zealand. It had an international following. The last poets, both musicians and poets, came of the late 1960s civil rights movement, black national movement. The group, three original members, Galen Kane and David Nelson and Owuli, originated in Harlem, New York in 1968 and evolved to include seven young black and Hispanic artists. This is the group cited most as the earliest influence on hip hop music. The lyrics to the recording, E Pluribus Unum, will be coupled with Gangsta Paradise and discussed to place the use of the King James Version of rap in its historical context. Common themes include life and how one should live. The Bible has constant uh, references to two masters and no man can serve two masters. And I hope we get to play with this a little bit in question and answers. Human beings being slaves under sin and sin comes from being under the spell of Satan. Other themes come out. Truth is a common theme. And so is light. Living the lie, the last poets. Living the lie leads us to sins. And I'm going to share uh, a couple of verses with you out of two uh, of their uh, lyrics, shall I say, their, their songs that they wrote. And one is E Pluribus Unum, and the other one is No More Prisons. How many of you heard of those two? Got one in the audience. I bet we have some more. You're just being bashful tonight. All right, I'm going to read. I did not give you a copy of No More Prisons, so let me just read that one. Uh, and I'll, I'll do excerpts of it. But it starts out with check, check, check it out, check it out, check it out. And then it repeats that four times. We need more prisons like a hole in the head. A prison is a home for the living dead. It is time for us to recognize that every man must be free if we really want to see eternity. Understand that the spirit is a prime source of life that can be stifled and put behind bars. We must all have an opportunity to shine like stars. We need more prisons like a hole in the head. Prisons create living dead. Prisons create living dead. Check, check it out, check, check, check it out. That was the last poet, so these are all their lyrics, late 1960s, early 1970s. So let's talk about these images that come to you when you're listening to the lyrics of the, of the rappers. Living the lie, last poets, living the lie leads us to sin. And I'm going to share with you the first verse of E Pluribus Unum. Selfish desires are burning like fires among those who hoard the goal as they continue to keep the people asleep and the truth from being told. Remember I said one of the themes is about truth. So ideas of you being blocked from the truth. And as religious people, we know that Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. And that's in John 14, 16, 14, 6. 
The song starts with the idea of how America was formed based on racism, greed, and exploitation. And then it quickly brings it to the modern day exploits. Dow Jones, the credit system we have, and the debt caused by the exploits. And that's because when you saw the images, they used pretty much modern images. But the song was done in the 19, late 1960s. As a matter of fact, I, I want to say it was 1970. So, now that second verse in the last poets. Now Dow Jones owns the people's homes and all the surrounding land, buying and selling their humble dwellings in the name of the master plan. Credit cards, master charts, legacies of wheels, real estate, stocks and bonds on coupon paper bills. But the dollar bill is their only god, and they don't even trust each other. And over the pyramid hangs the devil's eye that stole from the truth and created the lie. Last verse, and so the power is in the hand of the ruling classes, playing God with the fate of all the masses. So the people don't get any in the land of the plenty, because E pluribus unum means one out of many. Still very powerful, still very pertinent uh, to today. We put value on money, that means nothing, so we're perpetuating a lot. Rappers, I see them as people who go outside of the camp, and there are always people who are outside of the camp. They can be seen as not trying to please man. Some of them go directly to God, and somebody can argue with me on that because we know some of them don't, like those in the camp. Okay. In the No More Prisons one that I read to you, that concept of freedom, freedom is true life in terms of having to shine your light, and the Bible discusses that kind of freedom. In Christ, there is freedom. Matthew says, being the light of the world. Prison is what we are captured in. Living in sin, the lie. The truth is the freedom, and it's time for us to recognize that. The spirit, prisons break the spirit, and that's another thing that you see in Coolio, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Is the brokenness of the spirit that brings out the words in the prison. On whom who is poor and of a contrite spirit, idea of the broken spirit yearning for truth, and that's Isaiah 66, 2. Psalms 51, 17, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. And then in John 10, 10, he says, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. Prisons from the outside are usually seen as dens of thieves, but from the inside, it can be also be seen as a den that steals, kills, and destroys. And we go back to the living dead uh, by the poets. A search for freedom, the truth, the opportunity for light and life. Prisons perpetuate the lie on the outside that steals the minds, kills the body, and destroys the soul. This living the lie is the living dead. And then trying to get those in power to quit perpetuating certain lies. And you must remember when these particular lyrics were penned, you're talking about the late 1960s, early 1970s, where people were being imprisoned falsely uh, because their politics were different or for whatever reason. And so, again, dealing with these kinds of images um, still with us today, shall I say. Coolio. From the beginning, the last poets to Coolio, the artists articulate biblical language in rap, showing that truth crosses all barriers, both within and outside the camp. The idea of the lie as so appealing, so popular and desiring, it becomes harder and harder to move away from it. It becomes natural. The lie is harmful. It propels generations to long, to want, to become greedy. We equate it with the dream. But the truth is like nature. It is simple. It is content with little. The true reward is God himself. And as Coolio raps, he talks about how the lie is the driving force behind the gangster's paradise, which is hell. He begins this march of the gangster paradise with, as I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. This is a different valley from the KJV, but the valley that Coolio is referencing, 
is the neighborhood or an environment that exudes a cycle of violence and death. In the beginning, Coolio does not use, in the beginning, which if, if you read the King James Version, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Showing that he is leading himself. Whereas David starts off with the Lord, showing that he is being led and provided for, in comparison to the fearless that David portrayed, fearlessness that David portrayed while walking through the valley, Coolio's notion of being fearless is a result of hypermasculinity, not being in the presence of God. Like David, who says, Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Furthermore, the triumph of Coolio's enemies is by physical death, essentially by Coolio's own hands or tools. Whereas David's triumph over his enemies is through the hands of God. And again, yea, though I walk through the valley of death, valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. He restoreth my soul, he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is David's version of the valley of the shadow of death. Julio's is very much a different version. What is following Julio is not goodness and mercy, but children of his own damage and dangerous image. And I know some of you remember the little boy with the shades on. These are the people who are following Paul. Coolio. Um, let me just share a couple of lines with you. As I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I take a look at my life and realize there's nothing left. Up front, Coolio is telling us that death is apparent. It's all around him. Because I've been blasting and laughing so long that even my mama thinks that my mind is gone. But I ain't never crossed a man that didn't deserve it. Me be treated like a punk, you know, that's unheard of. You better watch how you're talking and where you're walking. Or you and your homies might be lying in chalk. This is by his own hands, or his homies' hands. I really hate to trip, but I got a lock. As you crop, I see myself in the pistol smoke. And then he tells us what gangster's paradise is. Been spending most of their lives living in the gangster paradise. What is the gangster paradise but hell? He backs it up by saying, look at the situation they got me facing. I can't live a normal life. I was raised by the streets. So I got to be down with the hood team. Too much television watching got me chasing dreams. I'm an educated fool with money on my mind. Got my tin in my hand and a gleam in my eye. I'm a locked out gangster, set tripping banger. And my homies is down, so don't arouse my anger, fool. Death ain't nothing but a heartbeat away. I'm living life, do or die. What can I say? I'm 23 now, but will I live to see 24? The way things are going, I don't know. And the scary part about that is, it really doesn't matter. Tell me why you are so blind to see that the ones we hurt are you and me. And here is the irony of paradise. It's counterproductive. It only hurts ourselves, and it is very much the opposite of David's paradise. 17 to 24, African-American male, you have a high uh, possibility of being killed by gun violence. Coolio is rapping about the reality on the street where death is apparent and life is without hope, without meaning. Yet the paradise is a trap. It's a reviving door, revolving door, and it has no meaning. I'm going to share a couple of other things that Julio shares with us that I find really interesting. Again, living the lie, he says, the power and the money, money and the power, minute after minute, hour after hour, everybody's running, but half of them ain't looking. What's going on in the kitchen? But I don't know what's cooking. 
Now, do you remember your grandmother saying, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen? This is everyday living. They say I gotta learn, but nobody's here to teach me. If they can't understand it, how can they reach me? I guess they can't. I guess they won't. I guess they front. That's why. I know my life is out of luck for them. Then he gives you the verse again, been spending most of their lives living in the gangster paradise. Tell me why are we so blind to see that the ones we hurt are you and me? Tell me why are we not so blind to see that the ones we hurt are you and me? And here, Julio deals with the absence of a teacher, the lack of courage of those who possess the knowledge. Unlike Jesus who came to heal the sick, not the well, dealt with the lame, the lepers and the sinners, hung on the cross with the killer and the thief. And when the thief asked, Jesus, remember me when you come in your kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Truly I say to you today, you shall be with me in paradise. This is the opposite paradise of Coolio. If there is a paradise outside of what is being taught, he is ignorant of it. And this is due to an absence of teachers. They put forth little effort, if any. Psalms, Psalms 23 is about awareness and dependency. And King David was being led, he was being taught and restored by God. He takes the same approach of being dependent on God in the valley, so his dependency doesn't change throughout, even when he's presented, throughout his story, even when he's presented with danger. With this, David concludes his paradise is dwelling in the house of the Lord forever. Both David's valley and Coolio's valley force us to examine Matthew 16, 26. For what is man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or, shall, or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Perhaps the gangster's paradise. Thank you.